Earth is a globe where change is constant, even if we may not always be able to detect it. One such theory is plate tectonics. However, every now and again, something spectacular occurs, raising fresh concerns about the continent of Africa splitting in two. Recent events in southwestern Kenya have resulted in the rapid development of a massive fracture measuring several miles in length. Part of the Nairobi Narok roadway collapsed due to the growing rip. Africa, the second largest continent, is slowly being torn apart by a massive gap. When the region's tectonic plates, the planet's outer sections, collide, mountains form, and when they pull apart, enormous basins form. Is Africa really breaking apart, and if so, when will it do so? To answer this question, join us as we explore why something dreadful is occurring in Africa, and no one knows why. The Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Red Sea are the continent's four inland seas. The equator roughly splits it in two halves down the middle. Cape Verde, Madagascar, Mauritius, Seychelles, and Comoros are all part of this continent. Scholars disagree on where the name Africa first appeared. Most believe it stems from words used by the Phoenicians, Greeks, and Romans. Important words include the Egyptian word Afruika, meaning motherland, the Greek word Afriki, meaning without cold, and the Latin word Aprika, meaning sunny. There are currently more countries in Africa than on any other continent. Africa is a special place in the annals of mankind. Africa is the only continent where fossils have been found that show humans and their ancestors in every major evolutionary stage. Our earliest predecessors were Australopithecines. Our ancestors who made tools were Homo habilis. And our ancestors who were able to walk upright and were more robust than Homo habilis were a relative of Homo erectus. These forebears pioneered the use of stone tools, descended from trees, began walking upright, and most significantly set out to discover and populate new lands. Homo erectus has been discovered in the Far East, and their tools have been unearthed in Asia and Europe, whereas Australopithecines and Homo habilis have only been discovered in Africa. This data lends credence to the theory that Homo erectus, an African human ancestor, was the first to successfully leave the continent and colonize the rest of the world. Many academics, scientists, and politicians worry that Africa will be hit harder by the effects of climate change than any other continent. Changing patterns of precipitation, crops reaching their heat tolerance limitations, pastoral farmers spending more time searching for water supplies, and the spread of malaria and other diseases across the continent are all consequences of global warming. A number of tectonic plates make up the lithosphere, the crust and top section of the mantle of Earth. These plates are in constant motion with respect to one another, gliding over a viscous asthenosphere. Convection currents inside the asthenosphere and forces created at plate boundaries are likely contributors to their motion, though this is still up for debate. In addition to rearranging the plates, these forces can also cause them to break apart, creating a gap and, in extreme cases, new plate boundaries. This is occurring, for instance, in the East African Rift System. Volcanoes, sinking land, and a torrent of seawater have all been triggered by the opening of a large fissure in northeast Ethiopia in 2005, which may signal the first continental breakup since modern humans originated. The ground in northeast Ethiopia cracked apart over the course of a few days in September 2005, accompanied by a swarm of volcanic explosions and hundreds of earthquakes. In the Ifar Depression, an inhospitable spit of desert where summer temperatures can reach as high as 120 degrees, a bubble of molten rock had been percolating below the earth for millions of years. At last, it broke the surface, dividing the ground along a rift about 40 miles long and up to 25 feet broad. Nothing like this had ever been seen before. This sort of phenomenon occurs frequently on the ocean floor, but this was the first recorded instance of it occurring on dry land. The Afar, a lonely region dotted with geysers, gas vents, hot springs, volcanoes, and one of the only lava lakes in the world, has been rocked by geological events before, making the fissure that occurred in 2005, now known as the Dabahu fissure, hardly the first of its kind. The Afar Triple Junction, where the Arabian, Nubian, and Somali plates meet, is a geological paradise. The plates are drifting apart at a rate comparable to the growth of a human fingernail, while activities beneath them are creating the high levels of heat and energy that give the area its distinctive geophysical characteristics. 
Today, the Dabahu fissure stands out among these other features. Scientists currently believe that the first continental separation since Pangaea will occur along this rift, and that Africa may span two continents in a couple million years or so, giving the Earth its newest ocean. Additionally, in recent times, a huge fissure, measuring several miles in length, suddenly appeared in southwestern Kenya. Part of the Nairobi Narok roadway collapsed due to the growing rip. Tectonic activity along the East African Rift was once blamed for the opening of the fissure. Even though geologists have concluded that this feature is almost certainly an erosional gully, it is still unclear why it originated there and whether its appearance has any relation to the continuing East African Rift. The fissure could have been caused, for instance, by the erosion of soft soils that were filling an old rift-related fault. There is always change with Mother Earth, even if we may not always be able to detect it. One such theory is plate tectonics. However, every once in a while something major occurs, and people start wondering if Africa is indeed split in two again. Tectonic plates are in constant motion with respect to one another, gliding over a viscous asthenosphere. Convection currents inside the asthenosphere and forces created at plate boundaries are likely contributors to their motion, though this is still up for debate. In addition to rearranging the plates, these forces can also cause them to break apart, creating a gap and, in extreme cases, new plate boundaries. What is this mysterious rift system in East Africa? The North-South East African Rift System, or EARS, is a system of rifts and valleys formed when the Earth's crust cracked, and it is one of the greatest geological wonders in the world. The Eastern Rift Valley, which stretches from Jordan to the coast of Mozambique, is one of the two branches of EARS. Some of the world's deepest lakes can be found in the Western Rift Valley, which extends from Uganda to Mozambique. The African Plate is divided into the Somali and Nubian Plates by the East African Rift Valley, which extends over 1860 miles from the Gulf of Aden in the north to Zimbabwe in the south. When the massive fissure abruptly opened up in southwestern Kenya, it was clear that activity was taking place along the Ethiopian, Kenyan, and Tanzanian sections of the Rift Valley. When and why does a rift form? The lithosphere thins out and stretches when subjected to a horizontal extensional strain. A rift valley will eventually arise as a result of its eventual breach. Along the rift valley, this process is followed by surface manifestations such as volcanic and seismic activity. If a continental breakup continues through a series of rifts, a new ocean basin will eventually arise. This may sound bizarre, but keep in mind that the surface of the Earth is always changing, even if at a rate that is too slow for human experience to account for. The modern form of the planet only emerged recently. Huge tectonic plates fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, creating the land and sea that we see today over Eurasia, the Americas, Africa, Antarctica, and Oceania. However, these jigsaw pieces shift position over a period of millions of years, although very slowly. Consider the breakup the planet went through some 138 million years ago, when South America and Africa went their separate ways. It is clear that Africa and South America were previously linked as one continent because their western and eastern coastlines fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. The Earth is a dynamic planet, meaning it is always evolving. The plates are so thin and delicate that they move extremely slowly along the mantle's surface. This slipping of the plates is due to the revolving sluggish motion of convection currents in the mantle. The crustal plates are being pushed and pulled as on a conveyor belt by this upheaval. The ongoing shifting of these plates is responsible for geological phenomena such as earthquakes, mountain formation, volcanic activity, the birth of the new crust, and the death of the old crust. There are several fragments of Earth's crust. Plates are the common name for these items. There are a total of 12 major plates that make up Earth's crust. The major plate boundaries are depicted by the red lines on this globe. According to the theory known as continental drift, the continents have shifted and continue to move to this day. Although Alfred Wegener proposed this hypothesis in 1912, he did not have a firm grasp on the mechanisms at play. The plates have likely been in motion for millions of years, according to scientists. The seven continents of today's Earth were once joined into one massive landmass named Pangaea, which existed about 250 million years ago. Before the time of the dinosaurs, the continents of Earth were joined together to form Pangaea, the world's largest single land mass. The name Panthalassa was given to the enormous ocean that encircled the entire supercontinent. 
Researchers now think that North America was situated further south and east than it is now. Much of North America was actually in or very close to the tropics. How do they know that? Fossils from this time period have been discovered. Tropical vegetation and animals are represented by these fossils. Cold places like North Dakota and Greenland have yielded the fossils. The plates are still shifting, expanding the Atlantic Ocean and contracting the Pacific. Take note of the current location of the Indian subcontinent. After traveling hundreds of miles at a rapid rate, 4 inches per year, for 135 million years, the Indian plate slammed with the Eurasian plate with such force that it uplifted the Himalayas to become the world's highest mountain range. In 100 million or 200 million years, what do you think the world will be like? Where will the newest mountain ranges emerge? Where will new volcanoes erupt? In 50 million years, the Pacific Ocean will have shrunk considerably, and the Atlantic will have expanded. Both North and South America will have shifted westward, with California going north, while Greenland will be placed to the west and north. Africa's far eastern region will rotate eastward toward the Arabian Peninsula, while the continent's western portion will rotate clockwise and crash into Europe, producing tremendous mountain building on both continents. If current trends continue, Australia will shift further north into the tropics, while New Zealand will relocate to the south. The disappearance of East Africa will be a minor event in the grand geological scheme of things. Whether or not humanity survives to witness these transformations is an open question. Rifting of the continents can only occur if there are extensional forces strong enough to crack the lithosphere. Stresses in the East African rift originate in the underlying mantle's circulation, making it an active rift. A massive mantle plume is rising behind this rift, doming the lithosphere upward and heating it to the point where it weakens, stretches, and falls. It is known as the African Superswell and has been confirmed by geophysical evidence to exist as a hotter-than-average mantle plume. The pull-apart forces responsible for the creation of the Rift Valley and the unusually high morphology of the southern and eastern African plateaus have both been attributed to this superplume. The topography of rifts is easily recognizable, as it consists of a succession of depressions delimited by faults and surrounded by higher ground. From above, the East African system seems to be a succession of parallel rift valleys that are separated by huge bounding faults. These cracks didn't all appear at once. Rather, they developed in stages, with the first appearing in the Afar region of northern Ethiopia around 30 million years ago, and the last appearing in Zimbabwe around 5 million years ago. Rifting occurs beneath our feet most of the time, but when the Nubian and Somali plates continue to move apart, new faults, fissures, and cracks can emerge, or renewed movement along previous faults can cause earthquakes. Most of the seismic activity in East Africa, however, occurs across a large area of the Rift Valley and is rather weak. As the continents continue to break apart, the hot molten asthenosphere gets closer and closer to the surface, causing eruptions to occur on the surface. The East African Rift is exceptional because its length provides a window into rifting at various phases. Extension rates are low, and faulting is widespread in the southern part of the rift since it is still developing. Volcanic activity and earthquakes are at a minimum. However, in the Afar region, volcanic rocks cover the whole bottom of the rift valley. This indicates that the lithosphere is extremely thin here and on the verge of full breakdown. When this occurs, a new ocean will form as magma solidifies in the void left behind by the shattered tectonic plates. Over tens of millions of years, the whole length of the rift will experience seafloor spreading. There will be a gigantic island in the Indian water made up of parts of Ethiopia and Somalia, including the Horn of Africa, as a result of the water flooding in. However, the Afar Depression stands out as the most intense area within ears with the highest rates of magma generation and the most active volcanoes. Magma had built up in the mantle beneath the depression and was now forcing hot rocks to the surface, much like oil rising to the top of a lava lamp. Dabahu fissure was first revealed in 2005 when magma forced its way through crevices in the underlying rocks. According to Ebinger, the pressure was so great that the plate separated by as much as 25 feet, the equivalent of 400 years of separation in just a few days. One of the experts using satellite data to measure the new rift was sure he had made a mistake when he saw that number. Later, researchers found that the volume of magma below the surface caused the plates underlying the area to move at a significantly faster rate than typical. 
There were 13 other incidents over the next five years that were similar to the 2005 rifting, but not as severe. The plates have returned to their regular rate of movement today. Scientists believe that such spectacular events will occur once every 50 or 100 years in the future. With continued sea floor spreading, the depth of the Afar depression will increase. The Afar depression may be submerged if sea levels continue to rise. There is still a chance that the East African Rift does not succeed in creating an ocean. Even though all the splitting activity is expected to take place at the rift itself, scientists have discovered areas of molten rock and stretching in the Earth's crust miles away from the gap. The Mid-Continental Rift MCR, in North America is a rainbow-shaped fissure that opened up over a billion years ago and stretches over 1,800 miles. Over the course of 30 million years, the rift that separated present-day Detroit and central Kansas produced more than 240,000 cubic miles of volcanic rock. There are several hypotheses as to why, but the MRC is still the deepest rift that hasn't turned into an ocean. Maybe the Dabahu fissure will go the same route. We need a lot of time to find out for sure. An increased sense of urgency in continental rifting can be caused by dramatic events like the unexpected occurrence of faults the size of freeways. Rifting, on the other hand, is a very sluggish process that most of the time splits Africa without anyone realizing it. There are various hypotheses as to what would happen in the event that Africa breaks up. In one potential future, a sea would form between the Somalian plate and the rest of Africa. Ebinger suggested that eastern Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique might be incorporated into this new landmass together with Somalia, Eritrea, and Djibouti. In a different scenario, Tanzania and Mozambique would only split off at their eastern edges. If Africa breaks off, the breach between Ethiopia and Kenya might split in the next million to five million years, creating a new plate called Somalia. On the other hand, Africa might not be able to be divided in two. Ebinger speculated that the geological forces causing the rifting might be too sluggish to successfully split the Somalian and Nubian plates. The Mid-Continent Rift, which winds its way across the upper Midwest of North America, is a prominent example of a failed rift somewhere in the world. The East African Rift's eastern branch is a failed rift. Nonetheless, the western offshoot is flourishing. We do not know if the current rate of rifting will lead to the opening of an ocean basin comparable to the Red Sea, and then to something considerably larger, like a miniature Atlantic Ocean. Or maybe it could pick up speed and get there sooner. It could also come to a complete stop. What do you think the world will look like in 50 million years? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.